First Corinthians chapter six. Judge not, at least he be judged. That's what we've been talking about in the last three chapters. God is going to be the judge of us all. We shouldn't judge people but things. You ready for this one? You know, only people would read their Bible, they would shut up more. They wouldn't come up to be so judge not at least you be judged. No, you're just saying God's working on your in your heart. Because dare any of you Right to the Corinthian church. Have a matter against another, Christian against Christian. Go to law before the unjust, the lost people, and not before the saints. Um, there's a law case. Somebody has done wrong to another person in the church. And Paul is saying basically in his first verse as we move on. Why are you taking it to a bunch of unsaved people in a courthouse? Why are you two arguing as Christians before the unsaved? That is a poor testimony. Can't you find somebody in a church? And yet you have all over history churches and people of churches taking churches and people of churches before the law courts of this country. And those unsaved, drunken judges with some moral will look at you as a Christian and say, yeah, is that what it's all about? And they know just as well as where your heart is supposed to be, where your treasure is supposed to be. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Uh-oh. Judge not least ye be judged. You better be careful, person, because I may come back and judge you. God may call me back as a street minister and you'll have to hear me again. If you don't like my voice now, be careful what you say. Because saints, I'm a saint, will judge the world. Lost people. A mother that has wept on her knees over her lost children will stand in judgment of those children one day. And if the world shall be judged by you, I thought it was a great way to judgment with Jesus Christ. Are ye Christians unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Uh, I gave him 20 bucks and he didn't give it back to me. I lent him $1,000 and he never paid it back and said, you know, you can go by all the things. I gave him a place to stay and, you know, he kept the, the, the security What's that stuff compared to people's souls one day? The people at the farmer's market that hear my voice, and many do in the parking lot all around, they're going to hear from me one day again. And it will be the last time they hear from me. As Jesus will tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Now what gives us the right to judge angels? Because our belief in God is all voluntarily by faith. We've never seen Jesus. We've never seen God. And those one-third of those angels that have seen God and have seen Jesus Christ, we stand higher than them and we will judge them. I mean, wouldn't you think that if you stood in the presence of God Almighty that you would never want to leave that presence? And yet at least a third of them will leave. How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, money, uh, goods, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Find that person who's, who's not well known. He's, he's, he's an example to the church. He's, he's faithful to the church. But, you know, he's not that really friendly. And, you know, he can't do a lot of things. He, he's just a simpleton. Pull him up as your judge. That's what Paul's saying. 
You didn't get your security deposit back? Pull that simpleton up. I'm not making fun of that simpleton. He may not know either two of these parties. Let's be the best. Let them put it out before this guy in the church who's a member of the church. And, hey, this, that, this, that. And let, why go before an unsaved judge and battle it out? Watch what Paul says. I speak to your shame. It is a shame for a Christian for a church to go before the law court of America. Or any law court. You are going before a lost man stating that we care about material things than we do about Jesus. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall abide to judge between his brethren? You can't find a simpleton? You can't find somebody who, who's wise enough to handle it? There's nobody in your church that can hear your two matters? But brother goes to law with brother saved, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is an utter fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye rather why do ye not rather take the wrong take wrong? Just you know what? I don't care. Keep the security. And one day the judgment seat of Christ, whether I be right or whether you be right, it'll, it'll be weighed out there. Go ahead. Just for the sake, you know, of, of our conscience in our church, I don't want to go any further. You know? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Just let it go. Let Christ reign it out. Let, that, let the conscience work on the one that, that is guilty. One of them has got to be guilty. Nay, ye do wrong, defraud, and that your brethren. So there, there's, there's judgment right there. Judge not, least ye be judged. Paul's saying, listen, if you've got two Christians that got any kind of sentence, argument, does he say, judge not, least ye be you know, let No, he says, have the court in the church. Go up to the pastor or a deacon and say, hey, is there anybody in this church who really doesn't know us too? We've got an issue at hand. We don't know who's guilty or who's innocent. If we may have that person who doesn't really know, if you could go ask him if he could sit and listen to us. And you know what? You're going to save a lot of money because of court costs, lawyer costs, and all that. You'd be wasting money that where you could give to the Lord or you can give to your spouse in Corinthians and say, you know, wife. She needs things. God needs things. Why are you going to pay an unsaved? Oh, you're going to get a lawyer that's in your church involved with your matter. Now you got another brother taking sides against another brother. That's so in discord. That ain't right either. Find a simpleton. Find a wise man. If not, just, all right, let it go. May God bless me and help me go with the loss. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that is, womenish or unmanly, if that's not today's American men that want to go into the woman's room, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now that abuser, I looked at that word for a minute and said, the dictionary says misuse. But when we talk about drugs and narcotics and all that, don't we call them drug abusers? There it is. Where you get the word abuser when it comes to drugs or alcohol is from the Bible. Abusers and sissy men are ranked with adulterers and idolaters and fornicators, and they're not going to get the kingdom of God. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, 
So we got drug abusers and we got drunkards in the same context. Nor revilers or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. You change. You're a new man. You're a new creature. That flesh is put down. Hopefully you put most of these sins away if that's who you were. But ye are washed in the blood. But ye are sanctified, set apart. Ye are justified. You're made right in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So those sins are not to be named of the Christians. Those sins will not get you no reign in the millennium. All things are lawful unto me. I can do anything I want. I got a free will. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I would not be brought under the power of any. I got rights. That's what that verse is saying. I got rights. I got rights. Yeah. But what about responsibility? Liberty. Without responsibility is chaos. Meats for the belly. Oh, there you go. What do you do with that one? And people say, now we read about, you know, one vegetarian diet. But what do you do? Two, two, two chapters later, you know, I think we all, all eat vegetables. Meats for the belly. And bellies for meats. So God made food for the belly, and the belly was made to take food. But God shall destroy both it and them. Looks like we're not going to have a stomach or a belly in heaven. How's that look? Looks like when we're raptured, that's one of the things that remain behind your stomach. Your, your guts, your, your poo poo, and your urine. That ain't going to go up. Your blood won't go up. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now the body is not for fornication, not for yourself, it's not for pleasure, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. This body that has been purchased is God's body now, and we've all sinned. We've all, remember he says, these sins and such were some of you. We have not acknowledged who, who our body belongs to. And we would. And should. If we did, we really wouldn't need medical insurance and medical care if we really gave God this body to honor that's due. And God has both raised up the Lord, resurrection, and will also raise up us by his own power. Well, there's there's a rapture. We're going up one day. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? You are Christ and part of Christ. We're the bride. And Paul speaks about Paul with a husband and wife. They are one. We are one with Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What would be the harlot here? It would be the world, Satan, and yourself. Anything that this body is not given to Christ is a harlot. God forbid. What? Know ye not that he is joined to a harlot is one body? Remember that woman that, that Jesus spoke to at the well? He said, go tell your husband. Well, I don't have a husband. Yeah, I know you don't have a husband. But the four men that are your husband, or whatever it was, three or four. See, men see you have a problem. They think, okay, see, I've been married to one person because i got a one marriage license. 
A marriage license in the Bible is, is not just marriage. It's when you come flesh with flesh. There are some people out there who, who preach against sex and all like that. And they got a few extra marriages in that closet that they hide. And Jesus told you, listen, you step out on someone else. Now you're joined to that person. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. And that's a harlot. Adultery or fornication. You step your body, in the context we're talking right now, outside of Jesus Christ who owns your body, you are a harlot. You've given your body over to the world for pleasures. You've given your body over to Satan for pleasure. A lot of the singers that, that grew up in the 70s and early 80s, the, the, the colored ones, came out of Baptist churches. And they sold their voice and their body to Satan for money. I'm not going to give you any names. And then you look on how they died. They, they, if they were saved, they're going to glory before the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're not getting no crown. It'll be wood, hay, or stubble. In the eyes of God, you sold yourself. You're supposed to be for me. You, I give you a voice for me. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth without the body, outside the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. It's a charge against your body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Again, it's not brick, not wood. It's you. You are some part of that temple. A wall, a window, a door, whatever you are, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price, Acts 20, 28. Therefore glorify God in your body. Don't glorify your body for the world to look at and taunt and, and cheer and marvel. And you can't go to a good uh, chicken rib place around this without the women being dressed in the worldly fashion. That's wrong. It would be even more wrong if you're a Christian dressing like that. That body is God's body. If you are joined to a husband or wife, that body is God's body and your spouse's body. And no one else's. The marriage bed, God says, is undefiled. Between a husband and wife, you do whatever you want to do. Within the accordance of the Bible. But that body also belongs to the one that paid for it. God, the blood. Don't give it over to Satan. Don't give it over to the world. You age real quick. And your spirit, which are God's. All right, so wait a minute. My soul is saved by Jesus Christ. We know that. When a man believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, as I've had in 1987, my soul is absent from the body and present with the Lord. We know the salvation of the soul. Look what he said here. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So when I go to New Jerusalem one day, it ain't going to be Casper the Friendly Ghost. You're going to, I don't know if you're going to recognize me. I don't know that. But you, when you see me, you're going to see my fingers. You're going to see my face. You're going to see my eyes. You're going to see my arms and my feet. And I'll have my toe back. When I see you in glory, we're, I'm going to see your flesh, new flesh, new body. I didn't say flesh. I will see your body. And along with that body will be your spirit and your soul. Sinless, 
perfection. We're not going to be ghosts in heaven. We're not going to fly around like sheep. And another place in the Bible says we're going to be like him. I've heard you, uh, it says be like him. I, I'm only going to assume I am going to look like what Jesus Christ, but people don't know what he looks like today. And if I go by that verse, if I can stretch it further, I'm going to look Jewish because Jesus Christ was Jewish. According to Revelation 1, I'm going to have white hair. That's what Jesus had, white hair. But that's dealing with all the Christians all these years. So we'll, be, we'll be all men. Like Christ, male. The first one that God made was a male. The woman, the woman was brought on to be a helpmeet for the man, for the population. So yeah, we'll be all males. And some people won't like that teaching either. But the cherubims, the angels are spoken of as males. God is spoken of as males. And yeah, in your body. Today, glorify your body, your body right now. As if you give your body to God as glory. But when we are all changed, the moment of twinkle in an eye, and we shall be like him, we shall be as him. And as you look at like all the angels being males, um, one in the cherubim was spoken of as a man. Again, well, I don't know. Really don't. From what I see with that one, in well, we could be females and males. And all. But our body is going to be there with our soul and our spirit. And not just floating around. It's all God. God paid for the whole package. Now, if we die before the rapture, this body here, this flesh is going to be put in a grave somehow, some way. And God's going to call it back. He's going to redeem it. It's his. And at the time he wants it, then he gets it. And he's going to change it. He's going to be one thing he's going to do with a body I know for sure. He's going to take this, mortal, this mortal body that dies and make it immortality. He's going to take this, sin, this sinful body he's going to make it sinless. And it's going to have no pain and no sorrow and no trouble. No anguish for all eternity. That's one thing. And it belongs to God for all eternity. You're never going to lose your soul. You say, well, what about later on in the, in the future time and all that? Those one-third angels that fell, what about me? Could I? No, you can't because you've been purchased by God. Those angels have never been purchased by God. They were created by God, but they were never purchased. And what God purchases... He keeps. He throws the receipt away. He signs, seals, and delivers you. So don't ever worry about somewhere off in eternity. If we're ever going to you know, have the thing with the devil and stuff like that, which we won't. You are God's. You belong to God's. And he's going to keep you.